Okay, and welcome to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Yes, it's official. I've brought the show back. Anyway, what you're looking at here is going to be my new amplifier for the computer. Now, before we get into this, let's just take a look at the current setup that I have, which is a complete mess, but I'll try to go over this without my tremendous bulk getting in the way. So, first off, well, I've got the TV, which is being used as a monitor. And these two speakers here, which I modified. I put different drivers in them, and now they sound a lot better than they did. I can actually get some bass out of these speakers now. And this is the amplifier I'm using. It's a little Class D amplifier, well it's actually a Class T amplifier, but there's no difference. Now this all looks all right from the front, but let's take a look at the back. For this is the mess I was talking about. So, got these two wires here, which take the audio from the computer, it's two wires for stereo, obviously. And they go into this circuit here, which is a tone control out of another amplifier, so I can adjust balance and treble and bass. The thing is, this circuit requires a dual rail power supply, so, you know, you need negative and positive and ground. So that's what this circuit does. It takes a single rail supply. It uses a charge pump circuit, which I made from a triple five timer and a few other parts, and provides me with the positive and negative supply rails. But, yeah, I want to change all this because something is going to short out sooner or later, which is why I want to move over to something a bit more self-contained, such as this. But, I want to make one little modification to this, and that is, if you've ever used Windows 7, you might know of a feature called Loudness Equalization. And what this does is it tries to make everything pretty much the same level, and this is really useful for watching YouTube videos because, you know, some of them are blasting loud and others are just a faint whisper, you know? So that corrects all that. But other operating systems such as Linux and Windows XP, well, they just don't have that. So what I want to do is do that in hardware. And that's what this thing is, pretty much. What this actually is, is a microphone preamp that I made that has loudness equalization. And I have actually done a video on this. So if you want to see that video, the link is in the description and it's got schematics and everything. But what I want to do is chop off the microphone preamp section and just use the loudness equalization part. Anyway, let's get down to business. First thing I've got to do is open this thing up and find out where I can stick this. I've actually opened this up before and it's surprising how little there is in this thing. There we go. Really there's barely anything in this thing. But I think there's plenty of space between sort of around here, I think, would be a pretty good place to put that circuit just under the heatsink. See if that will go under there. Oh yeah, there's tons of space. Easily get that in there. I don't want to put it too close to the transformer because that might induce hum. Now this is supposed to be a surround sound home theatre type amp. It has inputs for front, rear and surround, as you can see here, and outputs for all the different speakers. But if you look at the actual amplifier section, there are only four output transistors, and I have absolutely no doubt that they're in a push-pull configuration. So we have two transistors in a push-pull configuration here, two transistors in a push-pull configuration here. So that's only going to give you two channels of audio, so unless there's some kind of magic voodoo going on inside this thing, there is just absolutely no way that this will produce five separate audio channels. That's just impossible. 
I have actually had a look on the other side of the circuit board. There's no surface mount components or anything going on there. So, what you see here is all that's there. So let's take a closer look at that board I'm going to modify. So, as you probably know, this is a microphone preamp that I made. Now I'll just go over the basic, like, building blocks of the circuit, if you will. So, over here we've got the microphone preamp section itself, which boosts the signal from the microphone. Then we've got this bit here with this transistor, which restricts some of that signal. Then, this bit here boosts the signal a little bit more. And finally, this bit here holds the peak voltage, and then sends it back into the base of this transistor here, so it can control how much of the signal gets through. And of course, there are doubles of everything on there because it's stereo. And I put in a bunch of switches so I can adjust how the thing works. Except I've forgotten what these switches do, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all this off. I'm going to cut this part off. So we're just left with this bit here. And there we go. But, we've got all these wires everywhere now, and it's going to be quite tricky to figure out what goes where. Now, I know this is our input wire to the limiter, or loudness equalization circuit, or whatever you want to call this. And this is where the power goes in. I don't know why I've used a coaxial wire there, but... So two of these wires go to these two transistors here, which are the ones that restrict the signal. Two of the wires connect to the um, peak hold output, and two of these wires are the audio wires, and um, which wires which is pretty much anybody's guess at this moment, but I'm guessing that these two wires are the peak hold output, so they will be connected to these two transistors here, which I believe is probably these two wires, because they're most closer to that. And I think these two are our audio outputs. And I don't know what that wire is, but it seems to be already connected to something, so I'm not going to worry about that. Right, well, it's time to put this circuit to the test. Now, I'm having to use the camera's microphone here because I was going to use my tablet as the function generator, but the output from that is just terrible. So I've had to use my computer as the function generator to generate the sine wave. Let's just zoom out a little bit on that. So obviously I cannot use the computer to record the sound while I'm doing this, so that's why it has to be this way. So you can see the input and output waveforms here. Now the blue waveform is what's going into this circuit and the yellow waveform is what's coming out of this circuit and as you can see it is amplifying. However, I'm going to turn the output voltage up and let's see what happens. So at first you can see it starts going up a little bit, but then it doesn't go up any further. I'm still increasing the input voltage, and as you can see, the output voltage is barely shifting at all. In fact, I can drive this all the way into the as far as it will go, and that output signal, as you can see, is staying pretty much the same. Until we get to about here, then it doesn't. But you can see it does work very well. It's doing its job. And I'd say we've got a pretty good compression ratio going on there. So the next thing to do is to put this into the amplifier. Right, so I have now put the loudness equalization circuit into the amplifier, and this is how I've wired it up. So, we've got the tape input here. That signal from the tape input will also come along this wire here, go into this potentiometer, and then into the loudness equalization circuit. And I've got the output from the loudness equalization circuit connected to the CD input. So when I put this onto CD, we'll be hearing the sound as it goes through this. There is just one small 
a problem. And that is, how am I going to power this little circuit? Because I could power it off the main transformer. But this transformer gives out 26 volts. Well, that's what it states on the transformer. But it could be higher than that. It could be lower than that. Either way, when that's rectified, that's going to be too much for the regulator. So, my solution, a secondary transformer with a full bridge rectifier on it. And that's going to sit in there somewhere, and that's going to provide the power for this. This little transformer gives out about 15 volts, which is just about enough for this circuit. Let's actually let's just give that a little power up and make sure. Alright, so I've got my meter connected up to the transformer. There's no need for a filter capacitor because there's already a filter capacitor on the limiter circuit itself. So, just plug this in and, as usual, I've got nowhere to plug anything in. I've got about a billion gazillion sockets in this room and still nowhere to plug anything in. Because they're all occupied by my equipment. Right, so... You're watching a professional here. I'll just briefly plug this in. And there we are. And we're getting about 21.9 volts. So, that's good. I also have some WD-40 soaking into the screen of this meter because I put some tape across it in order to try to keep the battery compartment from falling out. And then when I took the tape away, it left a lot of residue on the screen, so I'm trying to get rid of that. Right then, we're all wired up and ready to go. I've got a tape here of 8-bit music in, which shouldn't land me any copyright issues. I've also shorted out the left and right peak holes together because, you know, if you can say a loud sound on the left and everything stays the same on the right, it's gonna make the stereo image shift all over the place, so we wanna avoid that. Well, here we go then. Powering on. Should be a relay click, there it goes. So our protection relay is hooked in. Let's just put some batteries into this Walkman. Hopefully it's on the right input. Let's see if it works. I'm hearing a very faint hiss out of the speakers, so we know it's doing something. Should have really thought about this before I put it. Before I tested it, but still, that's what you get when you don't plan ahead. So this is without the attenuator. I'm going to put the got the volume turned right down. So let's bring the volume up. So this is without the attenuator. And still. Speed on this thing is all over the place, but... Right. Let's try that with the attenuator on. So I'm going to turn the volume right down again, put it onto the CD input, which is going through this. Play the tape again. So this is through the attenuator. I mean the limiter. Oh, that's not good. Well, I guess this one is a fail. Or I could take things right back. I found the problem, and you might be able to tell, without shouting over it a bit, that with each peak of the music, it's actually going down and then coming back up again. So, yeah, found out what was wrong. I forgot to take into account that this circuit puts out DC with the audio signal on top of it. So I was putting DC into the amplifier and throwing the bias all off. Matter of fact, when I turned the volume up and down, I could see the speakers moving a lot. And 
That told me something was wrong right there, so put two capacitors in line with the signal coming out of this so the amplifier gets AC without any of the DC on it. Now it works perfectly, so yeah. Now it is a success, and until next time, goodbye. Okay, so, um, look at this. I'm trying to use my tablet as a frequency generator so we can test this thing. I've got this app up here on the thing, which generates, you know, frequencies, waveforms rather. And look at that output. It's terrible. Look at all that noise in the, in the signal there. I cannot use this even if I turn the volume right off. So, okay, we've got the volume as low as, well, got the volume completely off. And just look at all this noise. It's, it's ridiculous. I cannot use that as a test signal. Oh, let's just stop that. That's good if you want a white noise generator, but not really useful here.